Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to apply for histopathology training in the UK. My name is Sultan. I am currently an ST3 in histopathology in East of England. I am an international medical graduate. I'll explain everything you need to know about the histopathology training, um, sorry, the histopathology application process and everything I'm going to speak about will apply for both UK graduates and international medical graduates. I will briefly touch on the difference between SSG, it's the new name, it used to be called CSER versus the histopathology training which is the GMC approved uh, histopathology training and then I'll talk about person specification and eligibility to apply for the for the training program. I'll also explain what OREL is and how do you use it and then finally I will point out a few uh, pitfalls that I've noticed many candidates fall in which creates um, some problems in their applications. So, uh, so let me just uh, screen share. I will leave um, all the links down in the description uh, below uh, where you can find everything I'm about to show you right now. This is the official uh, web page by the Health Education England uh, where you can find all the information about uh, histopathology application so I'm just gonna jump right through the um, applying process so um, histopathology is um, is a run-through program which means it's a five-year program you apply once if you get in you do five years of training um, given that you pass all your exams and you meet all your curriculum requirements each year you graduate at the end of it and you become a consultant the other bit the other uh, the other um, alternative to that is the what, what's known now as the SSG I'm not very experienced about this pathway but um, it's essentially where uh, there are consultants who work as histopathologists abroad and have lots of experience they can build their own portfolio pathway um, and then use that to provide evidence to the Health Education England that they are able to practice as consultants. But this is a tedious process because you bear the responsibility to meet all the curriculum requirements, provide all the evidence. Um, so I would highly encourage against going through this route because it's quite tedious and I find a lot of people spending up to five, six, seven or eight years trying to do, the, do it themselves, whereas if you get into the official uh, GMC approved histopathology training, everything is laid out for you. They are responsible of giving you what you need to do, giving you the instructions of what you need to do in a given year. And all you need to do is just meet that, uh, meet that requirement, which is usually not very uh, difficult and you'll progress much easier and smoothly um, to your journey of becoming a histopathology consultant. Right. So, when you decide to apply for histopathology training, you need to do it via the OREL, the OREL uh, website. So the OREL website is essentially just another platform. So just log in, um, create your username, register, and then log in. Um, so yeah, essentially OREL is just another platform where you can apply for all the histopathology, sorry, all the trainings in the UK, not necessarily for histopathology, but for all the training um, vacancies. So you, so this is the, um, the dashboard. So find vacancies and then all you need to write down in the search box, histopathology, um, click enter, and then you, uh, when the application process is open, you will find an advertised uh, post which says histopathology ST1. Um, as of now, these are the academic posts, which I'm not going to be talking about. It's a different, um, it's, it's similar to histopathology training, but it is partially research based. Um, so the, um, the uh, traditional histopathology training does not have a research uh, part implemented in it, and you can do research on your own time. However, this uh, academic post will have research days implemented in the training itself. So you're free to read all about the academic training posts and decide which one is, is more suitable for you. So this is where you find them. And once you find them, you can click apply and you follow the, um, you fill the application form and submit it, right? So let's go back to our main page where I'm going to talk about the main points about the histopathology training. Right, so when you, um, apply in Oriel, you will be asked to fill something called uh, the training self-assessment, okay? 
And the training self-assessment is essentially a list of questions which will ask you whether you have certain qualifications or if you have a certain presentation that are related to histopathology or if you've published any research related to histopathology or, or other, other specialties, whether you've done any taster week or clinical attachment in histopathology. And at the end, you will be given a score. I highly encourage you to go through the self-assessment score and see how much you can get. My advice is that you should not aim to get the highest score in each of them, but rather try to get some points in each part. Once you've submitted uh, the score you've given yourself through Oriel and then submitted your application, you will be contacted um, in about a month time with an email that, that has a link to a portal which will require you to submit your evidence for the points you've given yourself. Then they'll take your evidence and they'll take the points you've given yourself. They'll take it to a panel which will look into whether you've given yourself the right points or not. Many people are worried um, to overscore themselves uh, because it gives you there, there's like a massive warning that if you try to overscore uh, or exaggerate your achievement, it is a big problem and you may be even completely banned from applying to histopathology ever again. But don't be scared. If you give yourself a few more points accidentally, if, you, if it's a matter of a doubt whether you should get, you know, six points or eight points, um, and then you give yourself eight points and they score you down to six, it's usually not a major problem. But if you are not even eligible to score any points in that domain and then suddenly get given yourself like six, eight or ten points in that domain, then that will trigger a, a huge, uh, like that, that, then that will trigger um, a warning. During that process as well, the application form will go through long listing. And what long listing essentially means is that the panel is checking whether you are eligible for that training post and that is where person specification um, is important so let me show you what person specification is so um, i couldn't find the person specification for this year but i found the person specification of 2022 uh, which is um, around the time where i applied so um, essentially this is the eligibility criteria and what you must have is obviously a medical degree and then you must have as well a full registration with the GMC. Um, as you're aware there is provisional registration and full registration. Um, the provisional registration is only for foundation year one trainees and anything after that um, all the trainees will require a full registration. That's a whole separate process with the GMC which we which you will need to create an account uh, with the GMC. Um, and then apply for a full registration and follow the steps. And then you need to show evidence of uh, achieving the foundation competencies. Um, for UK graduates, it's quite straightforward. If you do your foundation year one and foundation year two, that's it. But for international medical graduates, um, it's slightly different, but it's not complicated as well. All you need to do is that you need to have um, your internship done, uh, which is what is equivalent to foundation year one. And in that internship year, it should have at least uh, three months of surgical uh, posts and three months of medical posts. Uh, let me just get the um, let me just get the information correct. Let me just yeah. So um, as it says, it's uh, the equivalent of foundation year one is your internship, as I said, and it needs to be at least three months in surgery and at least three months in medicine. Um, to qualify. So it's, it's quite easy to get those um, those training experiences anywhere, anywhere that does an internship program. For the foundation year two equivalent, it can be in any job abroad. Uh, so I did mine in pediatrics. I did a one year of pediatrics after my internship and, and uh, that can be equivalent to foundation year two. However, because I have not completed my 12 months of pediatrics, um, I was asked to do the, well, I actually elected to do the foundation year two program in the UK. So you can, you can decide whether you want to do a fully a second year abroad as well and then straight away apply for the histopathology training or apply for the foundation year two standalone program to complete the second year of training and then apply for your histopathology training. And how they check 
uh, this information is that either the person is currently doing a UK foundation training program, i.e. they are in their foundation year two and they're applying for hospitality training, or they've completed their um, foundation year uh, foundation training within the last 3.5 years before applying for hospitality training, or um, they have 12 month medical experience after full GMC registration. It means you've worked in the UK uh, for 12 months continuously before applying for a for a training program um, and obviously you need to be eligible uh, to work in the UK all of the other bits here uh, with the eligibility is quite straightforward I mean fitness to practice um, they're not very strict about that actually they're very they're very understanding with with disabilities and all of that to be able to speak uh, the language appropriately once you get your obviously in the process of your uh, GMC full registration they will uh, they will have to check uh, if you meet the English requirements. So getting the GMC full registration automatically means that your language skills are appropriate. Um, health, obviously, that's all right. I don't think there will be any issues there. And career progression, this is just to make sure that you don't have any anything dodgy within your um, career, uh, previous career, for example. So have a look at the person's specification. Whatever is mentioned rests about the desirable criteria it's not that important they don't really check about they don't really check on that you know you're not really going to be required to show any evidence but you in your interview you will be sure you know um sort of talking about your knowledge about these these domains all right so let's talk about the recruitment timelines so the vacancies will be published around uh, the 23rd and the applications will open on the 24th of october 2024 for this year these timelines change every year with every um, application process uh, so please do note these uh, dates on your calendar because the application window opens for approximately one month until the 21st of november um, and the it's it's nearly impossible to apply after the deadline so and in the last few days of the application process usually the website gets overwhelmed with the amount of people applying and it starts crash it starts crashing down so do not leave it till the last minute please try to apply as early as possible um, saying that applying early doesn't give you any points but it avoids you um, stressing out with all the IT problems that ha usually happens in the last uh, day or two uh, before the deadline so once you submit your application and you give your self-assessment score the um, the evidence uh, window opens around the 27th they send you an email they say well apply, um, submit all the evidence to which you've given yourself points for a very important point is that you are only allowed to use one avid one evidence in one domain so you cannot use a single achievement to score yourself in multiple parts of the self-assessment score uh, which I find some people do and they um, they get marked down for that so one achievement one domain used once only and as you can see the evidence upload window uh, closes on the 13th of December and then the panel checks your evidence against your score and they give you the results around the 7th to the 9th of Jan you can appeal if you think you've been underscored during this period um, and then once all the scores are out then they will take the highest scores usually the high the upper half and they'll invite those people to the interview process so the invitations to the interview will be sent uh, between the 6th and the 20th of january once you get your invitation um, you will be able to book the date of your interview now it is a first come first serve basis which means if you are eager to do your interview at a certain date you need to book your um, interview slot early because many people will book the, um, the the ideal times and you'll be left with the extreme morning or extreme evening times um, so once you get your, your invitation please uh, follow the link and book your um, interview slot as soon as possible and this in, this time around it will be between the 3rd and the 6th of February so once you finish your interview now a few days after the interviews uh, end you, they will open the um, the preferences so the preferences will have a list of all the deaneries and the hospitals that offer the histopathology training you will through Oriel. You're going to go through Oriel and you're going to have to rank your preferences, one being the most important or the most preferable uh, place you want to work in and then 10 is the least, for example, uh, least preferable. Now, if you do not choose um, 
the hospital or you don't put it in the preferences list they will not give you an offer for that place so you you will be asked for your preferences before you even know your um, interview um, mark or interviews uh, score so then the initial offers are released around the uh, 26th of march 2025 so the cumulative score of your interview and your self-assessment score will come in uh, will give you a total score um, to which then a computer will run through that along with the preferences each candidate have put and it will start sending uh, offers to the best scoring candidates so the initial offers are usually released on the 26th of uh, i mean the initial offers this year are released on the 26th of march and then you can either accept it which means once you accept the offer you cannot reject it later on you have to take the job or you can hold the offer which means you you are not decided yet you will hold it and decide later on and then decline which means you will just straight up refuse the job and then they'll pass the job to, to someone else you cannot reverse your decision now the option about holding is that you can only hold until the 3rd of april and if you do not accept that job before that deadline then it will automatically be rejected and given to someone else and you cannot reverse that as well when you accept the job there is a small box below which says would you opt for upgrades which means let's say if they've given you your third preference and you opt for upgrade someone who has the offer to the hospitals that you've ranked higher have rejected their job they can straight up upgrade you to that post but the catch is they're not gonna ask you, they're just gonna straight up upgrade you. You're just gonna get a notification that, well, you've moved from your preference three to preference two now um, because someone else did not want the job. Um, so we are giving it to you. So if you opt for upgrade, it's an automatic process. They do not ask you again, they just give it to you. So make sure that if you opt for the upgrades that you are happy to be upgraded to any of the hospitals above because as well, again, you cannot reverse that. So honestly, I don't know what these last two deadlines are for, but at this point you have your job, you've accepted it, and the hospital will contact you to uh, finish the paperwork and obviously just complete it in a timely manner because they'll clearly tell you how soon they want these uh, paperwork done. And yeah, and, and congratulations, you've um, successfully landed your ST1 histopathology training. <laughs> So I think the uh, the main pitfalls which I find a lot of trainees fall in is that they um, they don't apply early on. They wait till the last minute, and then when the application window comes to an end, the website gets overloaded with traffic. Lots of people applying at the same time, and then the um, Oriel simply crashes and it doesn't respond, and then people miss their deadlines because of that. Unfortunately, if that happens, knowing the Health Education England and Oriel, they they don't care. They're just they're just gonna ask you to apply again next year. The second pitfall I've noticed is that some candidates um, are they underscore themselves a lot in fear that they might be banned or given a disciplinary action against them overscoring themselves. In all honesty, if you overscore yourself genuinely because you were not sure whether you deserve a six or an eight on a self-assessment score that is absolutely fine. It's better to slightly um, give yourself points where you think you deserve them and then the panel decides you don't. Um, it's better than you deliberately underscoring yourself a lot and then and then the panel will just agree to give you the same, those points. Saying that, I have been actually given extra points by the panel uh, because um, I've underscored myself in one domain, in the leadership domain, and they said, well, the evidence you've shown us will actually give you two more points. So they've, uh, they've given me two more points. That is not a very common scenario, but it can actually happen. So try to be as truthful as possible. You will not get in trouble if you're trying to be as honest as you can. Um, it's absolutely fine. The third pitfall I've noticed is that some people use the same evidence more than once and you are not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to use your histopathology uh, research um, in more than one domain in an attempt to score like 20 or 30 points using one evidence. So that is just simply not going to work. So I'll be making videos talking about um, how to score well in your, in your histopathology interview um, and other histopathology related videos um, so please stay subscribed like the video and leave your comments down below 
Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon.